Google AI Studio has been there for some time now, but they just gave it a massive facelift with a bunch of new upgrades and some really slick UI changes. The whole UI is now built around this one idea, which is the fastest way from prompt to production with Gemini. In this video, I want to take you through all of those in detail. Let's just jump right into my Google AI Studio and look into it. All right, so now I am in the new and improved UI of Google AI Studio. And as soon as you are in this, you will immediately see that you're greeted with these three cards, which kind of follows the philosophy of from prompt to production with Gemini, right? So you can prompt with all the different types of models available in the playground, and then you can wipe code with the build app functionality, and then you can monitor the usage in the dashboard. The homepage also gives you a really immediate understanding of what are the latest and greatest, which is available. 3.1 is the latest video model. Nano Banana is the latest image model. And as Google releases more and more models, you will see all of those updates over here, right? So that's the idea. And here, if you want to use something directly in code, that means embed the Gemini API, they also provide the capability for you to look into all of these different options, right? So first things first, I want to start with the vibe code section where they have done some impressive work and have some added some impressive UI changes. So once I click on this, here is what I get as the first screen. You can open this toggle and see that these are the four sections which you have within the build. So you can start by just describing your idea and vibe code it. But then you also have all of these available apps from Google so that you can get some inspiration. And most importantly, you can remix these apps. You can select, let's say you want to have some sort of like a video generation. So you can select this and then click on this and then you can go ahead and remix this app. Then whatever apps you have built, you are able to save these apps. So they, that will be saved. And then obviously there are some FAQs that they will keep updating that that is made available here. So let's do one thing. Let's start building with one app. So let's say I'm describing like, hey, design an interactive storybook app that lets user create personalized stories by inserting their own images and exploring various characters and environment. Uh, so that's that's an app uh, or a storybook that I want to build. Now, where it gets very interesting is you can actually like include all of these as part of the app. So if I click on this, there you go. It adds this as a feature. Like I want to also have an animate image with Veo, so I can add this as well. I can also have an AI powered chatbot. So you can see all of these interesting features that they're giving as part of as an initial kind of think of it as template where you can supercharge your app. I'm happy with what I'm seeing, but you also have the capability to go ahead and select. You can choose different models. You can provide like system instruction. You can also change the system instruction from React to Angular. So these are some of the things that you can also go ahead and select. So once I click on this, it goes off to races and now it is starting to build. And now here is another very cool thing, which is while it is building, it is continuously giving some interesting thoughts on what are the things that you could actually add to enhance your app. So enable users to make choice with the story that affect the plot leading to multiple story paths. So interesting because this is a very custom recommendation based on what I just asked it to do. So it's very phenomenal to see something like this. And then it is understanding that maybe you need to switch to your, switch to your API when you run out of a free coda and then unique characters. So what you could do is you can keep adding all of these things, whatever you like. And then once it has done, like you can run it again and then it'll enhance the initial app with all of these things, right? You can also connect your app to real-time Google Maps data, which I'm going to talk about it in just a second. And you can deploy the app, which I'm, again, I'm going to talk about it in just a second. So you see here, it thought about this for just over 30 seconds, which is very fast. And when someone is actually like trying to develop an app, so these are the things that it is trying to do, all of the structures and, and stuff like that. And it is already starting to code and generate all of these different components. It's really, really doing a great job with respect to vibe coding. It's clearly creating a very well-structured way as a developer would do it and creating multiple files and storing it in different components. So there's a UI component, there is an index file, an HTML file and stuff like that. And you can see the speed at which it is doing it. Well, the cool thing about this is it helps you to not only visualize your app, but it also through its own intelligence allows you to just supercharge your app and then add all of these functionalities while you're building the app, right? Now, what I'm also going to do is once it finishes, I'm also going to talk to you about how you can deploy something like this in just a click of a button. So if, you know, here I'm going to select this and it is going to check whether my project is billing enabled. And then when I click on deploy app, it is just going to deploy the app on Cloud Run, which is Google Cloud Run. And then it will give me the URL, which I can share it with you all. And you can just use the app to your benefit as well, right? So that's such a cool thing where 
It's literally from prompt to production with Gemini. That's the theme that you can see. You can also download the app so that you can upload it, upload all the bunch of files later. And also you can save it directly in GitHub so that you can do the version management and stuff like that. So it seems like our code is finished. So let's just run this and see what comes out of this. So I'm just going to upload my picture. And now the app is going to create the AI story and we will see how it helps. Now, throughout this, it is still suggesting all the interesting things that you can do. So you can add a bunch of AI features. You can add text styling, enable image sharing, save locally. Like it's pretty cool on how it and keep, keeps on encouraging for, for you to think about all the different things that you can add as part of your story. So you can always like look at it in full screen and stuff like that. I think the vibe coding portion of this has been incredibly improved. And now you can see that a developer can have a real end-to-end -end experience of not only building, but designing and using text to design and then deploying the app in production end-to-end. -end. So we'll let it finish and see the how the storybook turns out. I have to, I'm very excited to see that myself. And then we will get into the other sections. So there you go. You can clearly see that this is sort of me and zoom in a little bit. So his, his name be Pip. And then you can see that I asked it to dress me in a different characters. So that's exactly what it's doing. So now I'm an astronaut. I'm a chef. And this is my gardener, right? So it's a small story. Then I can start a new story all over again. Pretty well done based on what I had asked. Then I have the capability to save it or I can copy the app. As I mentioned, I can also share the app to anyone who is interested. And then I can publish the app as well, right? So these are some of the things that you can do from a vibe coding perspective. So that was like a major section that I definitely wanted to cover. Now, a big update that they have done with Google AI Studio is now the Gemini API is grounded with Google Map platform data as well. You know, what that means is now if you are asking a question of Gemini, and if you have built an app like this, which I'm going to demonstrate in a second, the answers will be grounded with the maps data. So let's say that I want to plan a two day trip to Chicago. So I'm going to ask it to generate like a two day itinerary. And then at the same time, I want it to show everything in the map. But then the key thing here is the answers generated by Gemini are going to take the data from Google Maps data. So obviously it can take the data from Google search because it is already Gemini is already grounded with Google search. It also has the capability to take data from YouTube, but now this is a brand new update that you can see, right? So you can see that if I click on this and I can get to the Millennium Park. I can also look into the street view directly here. So it's suggesting that, and then the cloud gate, the art of Institute, of, the art Institute of Chicago and Willis Tower, right? So it's suggesting all of that. And then I can also go into the map and look into, look into all of these things in detail, right? So th these are all the things that it is suggesting and it is explaining what these things are. And then you can also have some interaction with this, but that goes around like how you're prompting your wipe in the wipe coding section to create your app. But the key update that I'm sharing is Gemini is now grounded with Google Maps data. So it can pull all of that up while you're interacting with it, which is a pretty cool feature. I want to show you the dashboard, which is really cool one. So here, as soon as you click on this, you can see it showcases all the different API keys that you have. And then it also gives you an understanding of the different projects that you have. So one thing that they've done really is you can now automatically create a project in your Google Cloud platform directly from AI Studio. So if I click on this here, I can just name a project. And if I do not have a Google Cloud platform login, then it will create that login for you. And then it will directly open the Google Cloud platform for you from here. So that's pretty cool and neat that they have done. So which I found very interesting. API keys, this was always a challenge to find. Now you can see all the API keys are available. You can create always, you can create a new one, but depending on the on the projects that you have, you can see these are the API keys uh, limited to that, right? So based on login ID, you can see who will have access to what kind of API. So that's pretty cool. And then most importantly, this is where you can see all the usage and billing. For instance, this has been my usage in this particular project. This has been my usage in another project. And that's something which is made very clear, right? So here, I'm, these were the number of API requests that I did on a daily basis. If I crossed any and any request on a basis, on a daily basis, I can see all of that. You can go all the way up to 90 days and look into this. Then this is the most critical element, right? Which is the rate limit. So have I hit the rate limit? I was generating a lot of videos. So did I hit the rate limit at any particular time, point in time? And it also gives me a very clear indication of whether I have crossed that late rate limit. And then finally the billing side of the house. So this is what I spent over the last 28 days. So that this directly comes from the Google Cloud console. You can absolutely go and see much more granular details in Google Cloud Console as well. But now here for a complete developer experience, 
you can see that you have now a complete dashboard which gives you all of these interesting details all the api keys that you have all the products that you have and then based on the projects and the billing associated with that particular project what is the total amount that you have spent what is the rate limit that you have and then what is the usage that you're looking at so that's one really cool component that they have added keeping like a developer persona in mind all right the next section that i want to talk about is the chat with different models in the playground so once you click on this is how the screen now looks like so you have a very clear understanding of what are the different types of models that, that are available there are models which will only look into images there are models which will only look into video there are models which will look into audio and then most important there's this model which will also do a live interaction right so the, all of those models are available now the new thing that they've added is you see the run settings this is where you can also go and select all of these different models and then you also have the capability to create like different system instructions and then save it for the future. So here, let's say I'm creating system instruction one, and then here I can say that act as a strategic advisor. This becomes my instruction one and I can have a definition there and then I can have another one, right? So teaching assistant. So here I'm saying, okay, act as a TA, right? So now I have got another one and I could go ahead and create a lot more, right? So I can say that, okay, marketing analyst. So act as a marketing analyst. So what I'm trying to demonstrate over here is now you suddenly have this capability for you to have like multiple system instructions saved. So depending on the kind of use cases that you have, you can simply have that particular system instruction selected and the right model selected, and then it can start behaving like that, right? So you don't have to create, you can save like multiple system instructions on the get go. Now, what you also see over here is very interesting. You can actually enable a temporary chat, which will not be saved from a conversation perspective, but you can still see like the logging and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. They also have enabled the compare mode. So you can go ahead and select the different models. So let's say I want to compare Gemini Flash with Gemini Pro. And then you ask, I ask a particular question, then it will basically run and it will show you the performance as well as the kind of output that it can generate. So think of LM Arena, but directly inside of Google AI Studio for all the different models that Google has, right? So pretty fascinating. Um, and of course, you're familiar with all of the different models. Let's try the latest one, which is the Nano Banana model, right? So I'm going to select that and I'm going to upload one of my images here. And I just want to ask Nano Banana to dress me like a, like a doctor in a hospital. Now you can also go ahead and change the aspect ratio, which is pretty cool. So I want to have a 21 by nine. And then you have all of these other things that you can play with and you click on the hit button. And now it's going to generate an image of me dressed as a doctor in a hospital, right? The important thing to note here is, and you can see that it has done a fascinating job. It has kept me as me, but then like it has created me in a hospital, in a busy hospital, right? So I can keep, keep changing the background and stuff like that, which I don't want to bore you guys with, but that's the idea. The cool thing here is you can also use the Imagine models, which is their flagship model. You can see all of these latest models, which are there, like Imagine for Ultra. So you should use like the Imagine model to create and image something from scratch. And the Nano Banana model is really good when you want to alter the model or want to maintain an image consistency. So that is how you use the, the combination of different models for you to get the best, best output. Now, if I go back to the Gemini models here, right? So let's say that I went back to using Nano Banana. What I can do is I can upload the same image as an example. And I have the capability to also ask questions about the image, right? So this is where here I can ask you to dress me as a doctor, but then once it dresses me as a doctor, I can change the model and it will still maintain the history because it is in the same series. And then I can say that, okay, now what will be the prompt that will generate the above image? So the cool thing here is it maintains that memory and because you have switched the model, now it's not going to generate the image but it is going to generate the prompt. So what I'm describing here is you can do different things without completely switching context. And this is where they've done an incredible job with this new release where you can play with all of these different models. And you also have these amazing capabilities when it comes to the Gemini 2.5 model. So let me take you through that in a second. So let's say that you're using Gemini 2.5 and this is where on, on the left-hand side, you can see that you have all of these interesting capabilities, right? So you can of course define system instruction, then you can, and thinking mode is enabled by default because it's the 2.5 professional, but you can also enable system thinking budget. So you can give it more time to think. Uh, obviously it is going to increase the token count and expenditure. Then you can provide like function calling. You can enable grounding with search. You can enable URL context. That means if you're providing a URL, it will understand all of that 
all of that information which is directly available in the URL and take into consideration while answering the question for you. So these are all the things that you can do when you're working directly with the Gemini 2.5 Pro model. All right, those were the key things that I wanted to cover. You can see that there are tons of new features that the AI Studio team has added. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know in the comment section. If you like the video or even dislike the video, please let me know so that I can improve. If you would like to share it with your friends, please do. And please definitely subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one.